In this video, I'll briefly go over some of the commonly used filters in mono solar system object photography and some of the less commonly known and what they do. My name's Garnet Leary. Thanks for watching. Planetary imaging with a mono camera will use the RGB filters that you find in an LRGB set. We won't be using the luminance and I'll explain that later. You're going to need to focus between each filter and the green filter is typically going to give you more signal than red or blue. So it's absolutely imperative that you have it in focus. It's also a good practice to align your images on the green channel and a very good practice to use the UT time of green if you're being scientific about your data collection. The IR pass filter or infrared pass filter is to solar system objects what HA is to deep space objects. I mean, it's that important. It is the single most important filter you can buy for planetary imaging, in my opinion, probably most people's. Here you can see the transmission line of the 850 nanometer ZWO IR pass filter. The real beauty of this filter is that it can beat the scene. So infrared is a whole lot less susceptible to bad scene conditions. So you can get a much sharper image on things like the moon and such. It can be used as the luminance filter for planetary imaging. You can also substitute the red channel for IR. Some of the sharpest lunar images I've ever taken were taken with the IR pass filter. It was absolutely critical to have it when I was shooting Mercury because it's so low on the horizon. And something really cool about the IR pass filter is you can use it to image the planets during the day. And that's because it blocks out all the, the blue sky that you see. It's a really cool filter, and it's definitely one you're going to want to invest in. And that's whether you're using mono or color. As long as you have an IR-sensitive color camera, you can get away with an IR pass filter. The less commonly employed filter is the CH4 or methane filter. And it's significantly useful for Jupiter and Saturn when you're studying the, the cloud patterns, the upper atmosphere. And... It's really unique in that it doesn't pay any attention to color detail at all. So the brighter parts of the image are showing you the upper atmosphere and the darker the lower. It's very scientifically useful and it's a really cool filter, but it's kind of niche. Um, you will need to bend two by two when you use it and you have to collect dark frames just like you would when you do deep sky imaging. The U filter or ultraviolet filter that's around 350 nanometers is really great for studying the atmosphere of Venus. It's essentially like the only way you can get any detail of Venus, which as you know, you can only see the upper atmosphere. But aside from that, it can be used for ultraviolet photography of plants and insects and the likes. It's recommended to have an eight inch aperture or larger it's a very niche filter, but if you're interested in Venus, then, then it's the way to go. The solar continuum filter is one of those ones that I had my eyes on for years, and I was reluctant to buy it because it was so expensive, but it's actually really good. If you're doing white light solar photography, then it's really excellent at pulling detail out of the surface. Um, I can stand by it. I, I've owned it and used it for years now. Um, absolutely love mine. Uh, I wouldn't shoot white light without it, but I can say that, uh, again, you need a large aperture to really make use of it because there's some darkening that takes place and, um, you'll have to do some post-processing to get rid of the, the green shift that occurs with it. But this can be used with, um, with color or mono and it will increase the, the transmission rate of the surface of the sun. So it's an excellent 
excellent filter and it's one that I can recommend. So real briefly, I wanted to show my imaging train on my 180 Maxitov and I'm using an eight position filter wheel, as you can see, um, because I'm using every single slot in it. The luminance, as I mentioned previously, is, is not important or relevant. I just have it there um, in case I wanna shoot uh, galaxies with the Maxitov, which I have done in the past. Um, so it's, it's already set up for, for broadband. That's why the luminance is there. So um, if you incorporate all of these filters, you'll need all of these slots. Something that I upgraded to, which I really love, is, is this Astrophysics Convertible Barlow. Um, you might want to check these out. They're, they're a little pricey, but the beauty of this is um, I can just remove the element off the, the Barlow when the same conditions don't permit and then just slide the whole system back together. Um, and this is a ZWO 290 mono camera. That's what I primarily use with this, this setup here, but I really like to be able to use the system this way. A lot of times the, uh, the sky is unfavorable. Actually for the last uh, two months for me, it's been completely horrid as you can see it's like this just a total white out and just no possibility for any imaging whatsoever which really sucks but yeah i really like the astrophysics barlow um i believe it was chris go that christopher go that mentioned it in a video and uh that's what got me interested in and the, it seems to be really good quality and uh, i like all the, the functionality of it but that's how I have mine set up and it works really well for me. So just thought I'd throw that out there.